I think that blending is one of the most important techniques that you can have up your sleeve. For oil painters, watercolors, acrylic paint, it doesn't matter which medium you're working in. But to be able to manipulate an edge from a hard edge to a soft and back again is very important, especially for the idea of creating a sense of space, the illusion of depth in a painting. Let me show you some examples. Here is a uh, fairly hard edged, all the way around the pepper is hard edged. And if you look at the background is a soft edge. So the soft edge tends to go back in space and the pepper comes forward because of the hard edge. Let's look at a different example and compare it. Uh, here is a pepper that's created, the same type of pepper, same size on the page, same soft edge in the background, but now the pepper itself has a softer edge. So hard edges and soft edges are so important in creating this type of background uh, form coming forward, reseeding space. Um, let's see what happens if we completely outline the pepper with a sort of an, a hard edge that doesn't feel like it's part of the painting. Now we feel like the pepper is cut out. So a hard edge isn't necessarily applying a black line all over. Let's go back and look at the hard edge of the pepper and compare the two. One looks much more realistic, the other looks more cartoony. If you're going for a cartoon look, then a hard edge outline works. Let's look at uh, this painting here. It's an old classic painting by a classic master. And we can see that he's used, and this is oil paint, he has used um, a variety of hard and soft edges. Just check out the outside of a pear, and we can see um, how it changes from a hard edge to a soft edge, and then back again to create volume. So now we're talking about edges being so important, creating illusion of space, and also the feeling of volume. We can do that with acrylic too. The difference is that oil paint is, uh, stays wet for a long period of time, and that enables a very easy way of uh, blending colors together. Acrylic dries fast, generally, so the easiest way to work with acrylic for blends is to use a slow drying paint like the Open. The other thing you can do is add retarder to your paint to slow down the drying. Now I have a whole video of all the ways that you can take acrylic and customize it to make it slower drying. So instead of using the open slow drying paint line, you can take whatever paint you have and make it dry slower so that you can enable yourself to create these soft edges. Let me just show you uh, a fun trick that I like to do to turn hard edges into soft. Probably the easiest way to get a soft edge blend between two colors is to use a wash on an absorbent surface. And I showed that in previous videos, but what if you wanted to make a blend between two colors that w didn't have a lot of water in it, that were pretty substantial uh, coating paints or opaque paints? So here is an example of two colors together in a sort of a ground sky, or just two colors together with a hard edge between them. And here I have softened it slightly, and here I've softened it all the way. It almost looks like an airbrush look. How did I do that? So I just wanted to show you how I did that. So I'm going to start with the first board that has the two colors, uh, the purple and the brown. And I'm going to uh, prop it up. And I have these two colors pre-mixed. One of my favorite things to do with acrylic is mix my own custom blend. I put a little water. I start with the heavy body paint, little water, little acrylic glazing liquid. So it's a little slow drying, not as long slow drying as the open paints, but uh, shorter, but long enough for me to get a nice um, blend. And so I swatch the tops with the actual color. The first thing I'm going to do is pick a soft, flat brush, and I'm going to pick uh, this one. It's soft and flat, and I'll be able to um, work with this edge here. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I already have a hard edge placed down, and 
Now I'm going to dip into this paint, and this paint, again, it has water and acrylic glazing liquid to slow down the drying a little bit. And I'm just going to put it right here at the edge. Now notice there's a difference between this color and this, and that's just because this is wet and this is dry. So that's why I mixed the color in a jar and used it as the background, and now I'm using it to smooth this out. I know that it's the exact color, so I only have to put it here. If I didn't mix this exact color, I'd have to repaint the whole thing. I'm going to take the paint off the paper towel, get rid of the paint in the water, get rid of the water. It's very important to get rid of the water. If I take water and add it to here, it'll turn into a wash and start to swim. And I'm using an opaque painting technique here for the blend. Now I go into this purple, and I'm not being skimpy with the paint. I'm really applying a nice thick layer of paint. And it's good I propped it up so that I can go all the way out. Again, I'm going to wipe off the excess paint on the paper towel, get rid of the paint, and I really jam my brush down into the water, get rid of the water. Now I use this flat brush without any paint and without any water uh, so that I'm going to run it right along this edge. Uh, the edge is right going to be in the middle of these, these bristles. And you can see I go like that. Now I'm going to go back this way. I don't want to flip my brush because <laughs> then I'm flipping the color. So I'm going to go back this way and I'm going to, oops, I think I just did that. <laughs> I'm going to go back and forth and I, I do this two or three times uh, letting it dry each time to get it nice and soft. So there it's uh, pretty soft and I'm not going to work it to get it perfect because it's already starting to get a little tacky that's when I stop. I'm going to smooth out this lump right here, and then I'll let it dry. Uh, I can quick dry it with a blow dryer, or let it dry, and then I can just keep doing the same thing over and over. However, uh, when I do my next layer, I am going to, uh, that's still wet, so I'm not going to work on it, but my next layer, I actually start a lot further out from the edge, and I do the same exact thing that I just did, but I'm not right on the edge. I start right here. And then I take one and I just move it all the way up to the other and move it all the way back here. Now in this case, this is just the second layer, so you can actually see the hard edge there. Um, but if I did this technique when this is dry, I would get this uh, final uh, airbrushed look where you have just the total hard edge is gone. It's all soft. So as a suggestion, take a couple of colors like this and pre-mix them and try what I did. Start with a hard edge, let it dry, and then apply the paint again right at the edge. Use a nice flat soft brush and see if you can come up with a super soft edge.